You're the kind of student that Adam State would want back, right? You'd right, think they I would, would hope. Be... I would, you know, and I was really kind of shocked as to there there was no help. There were no options. Like I said, with the whole class, that wasn't my fault at all. Yeah. Being scheduled at the same time, that class. So That's insane. Yeah, it was just kind of like, then what am I supposed to do? Because I don't, in my mind, calculating a semester's worth of cost out of my pocket, that's about $3,000 just for, you know. Just for the privilege of getting back into school. Yeah, exactly. Welcome to another edition of the Watching Adams podcast. I'm Danny Ladoni. Today we're speaking with Selena Greer. She's a former Adams State University student. She was attempting to complete a nursing degree, but wasn't able to do so. She talks in this interview about how she ended up taking some incomplete courses, and in order to make up those courses, she followed up in the next semester, but discovered that both courses were meeting at the same time, and though she tried to resolve the matter, she she ended up getting a technical fail in one of the classes because she couldn't be in two places at the same time. She talks about how she is now in debt, and she is actually one of four siblings in her family, all of whom went to Adam State, none of whom got a degree from the institution, and who have debt as a result of their time at the university. She talks about being a non-traditional student and being a single mom trying to complete her degree and the lack of reciprocation and support that she believes she received while trying to complete her degree at Adams State. All this and more on this edition of the Watching Adams podcast. My name's Selena Greer, and I'm a pretty much a Valley native. Started going to school at Adams State in 2010. I dropped out of high school when I was, well, I was a sophomore, and then didn't go back to school until I was 21. Then I had a, an attempted semester again over at Adams State, which didn't really go well. I just really wasn't ready to go to school. I was still kind of being just a young punk and partying too this much. This was in your early 20s? This is my early 20s, yeah. Okay. I didn't return to school until after the birth of my son. My son was born in 2008, and I was living up in Denver, and one of the big reasons that I moved back here to the Valley is to go back to school and and, uh, try to attempt to get a degree so I could better my life for my son and myself. And in all fairness, you could have gone to school up in Denver, but there was something about the Valley or something about Adams that had you decide to go to school here instead? My family, my dad was here, my brothers uh, were here, two of my brothers were here, and uh, just the availability of our families. Um, my father's son's family was here as well. And so we just had more help. Up in Denver, we were on our own. We didn't have any family there. So help raising your son, just that kind of support system that the right. Valley provided. And exactly. that made And Adam the fact that Adam State was cheaper uh, per semester than schools up in Denver. And so, going into it, did you know what you wanted to major in and that kind of thing? No, I didn't. Um, when I first started kind of figuring out what I wanted to major in, I was thinking psychology. I did about two semesters of that and was like, this isn't a fit for me. So then I wanted to go into healthcare. I wanted to go into the uh, nursing program. And so I started that in like 2011. I think I took like a year and then it took me about a year to, to figure that out. I started that and that was actually, that was going really well. I had, like I said, I had, there was a big gap in between my education as far as from, you know, dropping out of high school and then not getting uh, into any other kind of scholastic programs. So going back to college was pretty scary for me, especially, I know that I'm an intelligent person, but there was things that I was worried about, like math. I struggled with math when I was in school as a child and, you know, all the way up until high school until I dropped out. And so that was something that I was worried about. I did really well though when I came back to school and I had really good professors in the I guess what you would say were the remedial math courses and remedial math okay yeah yeah and so that was kind of set my mind to ease a little bit. Um, Were you able to complete the remedial math courses for your degree requirements? Uh, I, I, cause they started me out in like 095 and it goes all the way to 099. Right. And I was able to get into then college algebra from, I was able to complete that to get into then an actual <laughs> course that. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you were on a trajectory toward a degree. What ended up happening? My mother got ill 
and I took incompletes for a semester during that time because I was taking care of her and it was it was serious she almost died and so you know I was stayed in contact with the the university telling them what was going on and you know that this was uh, what was happening and uh, they were pretty understanding they gave me the incompletes I came back the next semester with the plan of I had to complete the courses that I had taken the incompletes in and pass those I had been on academic probation throughout my entirety of my stay there though because of the bad semester that I took when I was 21. Wow so that semester you had taken was that like eight years earlier, earlier six years earlier that semester had brought down your GPA so much that you were still on academic probation when you went back though you were getting better grades. Right well and the thing about that that I'm so kind of confused about is okay so I had not taken out any kind of financial aid like I didn't get loans I didn't, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't get any, like I might've gotten some, uh, Pell Grants and that, but mm -hmm. I didn't get any money. This and was your first bad my, semester? My first bad okay. semester, right. Okay. And so I had to pay out of pocket, um, it was about 2,500 bucks in order to come back to school, basically. Um, my GPA actually wasn't very bad. And when I then started taking courses, I had a 4.0 for a long time. It was my attempted hours versus my completed hours oh. is what was making me, you know, have to be on the probation. Due to those incompletes? Due to the first semester because I didn't complete any of those courses mm. and basically got, I, I'm guessing, technical fails or, you know, Fs and all of those courses. So you'd get a technical fail, I believe, if you didn't sort of complete the semester, you just kind of disappeared before a certain cutoff date. Exactly. And yes. then an actual fail is if you complete the whole semester, but you don't adequately meet the standards Correct. for the class. Okay. Correct. So that next semester though for me after you know taking the uh, the incompletes I had two courses that were actually scheduled on the same time block and they couldn't like there was I was like well I can't take you know, these two classes, I can't be two places at once. Were they both required classes for your degree? Um, one of them was towards my minor. I, I was minoring in Spanish and the other class was just, um, it was a speech class. And so, um, no, they weren't. But the thing was when I was like, what, how can I necessity, you know, what can I do to help this situation? The school was basically like, they didn't really do, they didn't do anything, period. And so I failed. I took a technical fail in the Spanish class, which then completely stripped me at the end of the semester. This is, wait, this is astonishing. So the semester starts. Can you say what semester this was? This was, um, I believe it was fall semester of 2013. So let's say the fall of 2013, you sign up for a Spanish class and a speech fundamentals class, right? And you discover that they're being scheduled for the same time. Right. Is this before the semester starts? Are you able to just drop one of the classes or what So happened? this was, these were both the classes that I had to take in completes in the, the semester before. I see. Right. So before when you took them, they were at different times. Exactly. You got incompletes and then you went to fill those incompletes and they were scheduled at the same time. So you couldn't be in two places at once to complete the two incompletes that you had. Correct. Was there another section of one of these classes that you could have just they switched into? didn't offer any kind of help and so after the semester I took a technical fail in the Spanish class which then completely stripped me of my financial aid. I mean it just seems like this is so so demonstrably not your fault. It isn't my Who fault. Who did you honestly. talk to about this or what department or what area to try and rectify it? Because it seems rectifiable. Um, I, when I had initially, because it was, it was like, there's, you know, how, how is this even fair, really? What time um, was the class, do you remember? It was like one o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so 1 p.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, it was something like that, because yeah. That... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Selena has to be in two places at once to complete her credits. Right, okay. right. And I talked to Ken Marquez, and it was basically like, you know, and, and I like Ken well enough, you know, it's not anything like that. Ken's a good guy. But it wasn't like, the, he was kind of like, I don't even, you what know. What was their solution? They had to come up with some way to resolve this problem. There wasn't any kind of resolve. There Amazing. So anything. you took a technical fail in which class? So I took the technical fail in uh, Eva Sia, uh, Raya Solis's Spanish. The Spanish class, mm -hmm. okay. 
And so then the next semester, they were like, we can't, you know, you now either have to, okay, so I have to, and this is still, you know, this is why I haven't returned there mm. because I have to pay to get my completed hours and my attempted hours at the 75%. Yeah. I have to take almost three full load semesters of classes that I have to pay for out of pocket. So that's- And you can't qualify for financial aid. I can't aid qualify or... for financial aid until I get those courses up to the 75% of completion. Right now I'm sitting at like a 62. At some point you'd probably look at the situation and ask Adam State, do you even want me to graduate? Because you're putting all of these obstacles in my way that are making it such that even if I wanted to be able to complete my degree, the barrier for re-entry is so high. It was very disheartening, really. And it's, um, you know, I'm still very frustrated and still now I'm $24,000 in debt because I did, you know, for the semesters that I had before. I'm a single mother. I don't get any, you know, my, um, I'm doing this all on my own to long story short. And so- And you don't have a degree, obviously. And I don't have a degree. How many credit hours did you complete? Do you remember? Mm. Would you say maybe one, two, three years toward a degree? Uh, I would definitely years? say two. Were you able to complete the nursing program or no. were you not even able to get into that? I was not of... even able to get into that because wow. of what happened. And I was very, very close. Like I said, I, if I would have completed that semester and the courses that I was taking, I would have one course that was only offered in the summer, two courses that are only offered in the summer that I would then have taken and then been able to then apply the following semester for the program. So if you'll permit me to speculate, if it weren't for these administrative barriers that you encountered, you could at this time be well on your way or actually even working as a nurse. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. It was <laughs> kind of too, and especially in certain departments when I was trying to figure this out, it was like, you know, I know that there's a lot of fly-by-nighters, but, um, you know, this in my case was not the fact. I was, you know, uh, vice president. I was vice uh, president of uh, internal affairs for ASNF, which is the student government there. And then I was also um, the non-traditional senator for three semesters. I was super involved. I was the chair of the public relations committee. I was one of the chairs for the LGBT uh, Prism Club. So you were really involved I on was campus. Really involved on in campus. Mean, this almost reminds me of this this movie by Wes Anderson called Rushmore. And in the movie Rushmore, the character is involved in like every extracurricular imaginable you know he's so involved but he can't pass his classes like he's struggling with the bare essentials of his degree and it sounds like you're you, you were like the Rushmore of Adam State here I was really working hard and the thing too, in all was, fairness it's not like your academics were being impeded by your extracurricular involvement right like no no, no. And, and you know... You, were, you had a 4.0, you said, Yeah, for a I had while. a 4.0. Um, when I first initially came back, my, you know, the end of my first semester, I had a 3.75. I was doing really, really well. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, you know, I was I was kicking ass. You're probably on honor roll and all of those things that, that come with being a really high-performing student. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You're the kind of student that Adam State would want back, right? You'd right, think they I would, would hope. Be... I would, you know, and I was really kind of shocked as to their there was no help. There were no options. Like I said, with the whole class, that wasn't my fault at all. Yeah. Being scheduled at the same time, that class. So That's insane. Yeah, it was just kind of like, then what am I supposed to do? Because I don't, in my mind, calculating a semester's worth of cost out of my pocket, that's about $3,000 just for, you know... Just for the privilege of getting back into school. Yeah, exactly. Plus the $24,000, but you're probably paying them off now. Well, right now I'm in deferment. I'm yeah. in deferment. I'm, I, you know, I'm roofing. That's what I do for trade. Roofing because you have a, a family roofing have a family, business. Right, okay. family roofing business. And that's, you know, I've, I've roofed for 17 years. So then when that didn't, the school didn't work out, it was like kind of like, all right, we'll fall back on what I know. Yeah. Which I definitely, as a, you know, yeah. as a single mother and, yeah. and uh, no, I am definitely, it's a misogynistic field. 
Um, it's roofing. hard roofing. Okay. Construction in general. Yeah. Um, it's hard work. And yeah. I'm a female, and I'm not saying that I don't want to or can't do that because I have done that. But definitely, you know, strolling around a hospital, running around on my feet for, you know, 15 hours in comparison to roofing for nine hours a day, um, that looked so much more my speed. Yeah. So. I um, mean, the sad thing is the whole story around higher education, the whole reason that Adam State exists in the San Luis Valley is so that the, the child of a family of roofers could aspire to some other profession if they wanted to. Not that they couldn't be a roofer, not that they couldn't be a farmer or a rancher, but if you wanted to go on to get a degree to do something else, to be a nurse, then you'd have that opportunity. And it sounds like in, in the most basic structural way, Adam State really kind of failed to accommodate you with a series of rules that, that scheduling-wise weren't really your fault, but then it didn't sound like they were that interested in helping you to bridge the gap so that you could because you had a sincere conviction to complete your degree it sounds like you were really there because you really wanted to go back to school really i truly did and you know i would have been the one of the well i would have been the first person to graduate in my family beyond my dad yeah you know that was important to me that was important to me um to be an example especially in school that for my son you know not graduating from high school which whatever. <laughs> did you get your GED? I did the year I was supposed to graduate. I okay. got my GED and yeah. um, I don't know. I just, I, when I went back to school, I was really excited and I'd never been excited about school in my entire life. I, I mean, I had you as a student and then I saw you around in the years to follow and you really seemed like you fit at Adam State. You know, there are some people that don't seem like they fit and then they leave because they just never really connected to the school, but you were really connected to the school. I truly was. I truly was. And I work my, you know, I work my tail off a, a lot for that school as well. I ended up having some health issues myself. And it was, it was just kind of like kick her off the back of the turnip truck and see what happens. You know, I, I don't know. It would, like I said, I just felt really like there wasn't, there wasn't any options for me and nobody really cared really. So maybe that level of investment that you felt toward the school, that you thought the school felt toward you, it turns out they maybe didn't actually reciprocate. Oh, it they, wasn't. There wasn't, you know, there there straight up was no reciprocation of that at all. Did you feel any difference going there as a non-traditional student? I mean, how is Adams to a single mom going to school as uh, opposed to a college-age student? You know, there's some aspects of that school that are kind of like, I think, you know, they're definitely tailoring or, or accommodating the younger uh, student more than they are the non-traditional student there, uh, which I'm not really surprised by, but at the same time, yeah, that's there's a definite um, difference there because I was a non-traditional student. They used to call me Grandma Greer. <laughs> the kids and that girl. That'll make you feel old fast. <laughs> Ocran and I went to high school together, so uh, I, I can sort of guess that you were fitting in at a slightly older age, but you're also not like the age of most of your professors. You were a few years older. <laughs> But that's all. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, they're wanting to please the people who are, who are putting money in the school, like the the sports. Like, the you know, they're wanting to get kids down here or are going to, you know, build them a new baseball field. <laughs> Our family housing for the, you know, the people with families and stuff, that's terrible. But yet we've got to... So family housing was one of the areas that you felt Adam State didn't... Oh, definitely. It's that those buildings are hurting. But, you know, we have a nice new stadium with those apartments for those kids. That's great. So let me ask then, because it sounds like you've hit on one of the disparities between the athlete and the non-athlete, between athletics and academics. If instead of being a single mom trying to complete a nursing degree when you had your incomplete two places at once problem, do you think it would have been different for you if you were a star athlete, if you were on the track team or if you were a football player? And how would it have been different? Do you, do you imagine? I'm asking you to speculate. Sure. Um, just off of speculation, I would have pictured it being really different. Different. I would have pictured if I would have been a star athlete that was going to draw more people in the future wanting to come to Adam State for their athletic de uh, departments, that they probably would have gone a little bit more out of their way to 
help me stay in school and to help that scheduling conflict. But no, you know, I'm just regular old mama and, and you know, it wasn't, there wasn't really any help. And like I said, I think there was this aspect to when I was letting the university know what was going on and I had documentation from my mom's doctors and stuff like that. So you had um, some family medical leave issues. Yes, exactly. That were all legit. There was almost <coughs> this sense of kind of like, this is your mom. This isn't you. And why are you doing this? Because, you know, you you don't really have to do this. Kind of, I, I don't know. I just kind of got this feeling that it was like... So they weren't really working with you when you needed to take a break from your academics to take care of your mom. Exactly. And then the following semester, too, it's just like uh, when I came back and I had that scheduling conflict, I had then started um, having some medical issues myself. And it was, it was just like... I don't know. I almost felt like they felt like I was lying. <laughs> mm. I mean, it seems like if everything goes well for you at Adam State, the machine is streamlined to kind of push you and funnel you through it. But if you have any issues or complications, the way to like help realign you onto your track, those mechanisms just don't seem to function very well. Right. Because the problem you've described is not, it's not rocket science to figure out how to either defer one of your incompletes to another semester or work out some other academic plan to resolve it outside of the class or some other method but the fact that they didn't suggest that and that you ended up taking a technical fail for you know one of those classes as a result was it's it's bad design right ultimately right. Exactly. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add upon reflection? So right now you have no kind of plans to return to Adam State because it sounds cost prohibitive for you to do so. You have the student debt that you've accrued from the time that you went there. If you could do it all over again, would you do anything differently? What would you tell your younger self as advice? Or what would you tell someone else in your situation now? I would have told my younger self, it, knowing what I know now, uh, just not to let them just kind of railroad me into like, okay, well, there is nothing. That's nothing. Okay, well, there's nothing to do. So, you know, and me not knowing then the consequences that were going to follow from that, of then like, you're, you're really screwed. So at the time that you were presented with that choice, you didn't realize the ramifications. No, didn't know that at all. And if you had, maybe you would have pushed back harder, or exactly. investigated further. Oh, yeah, exactly. So what you didn't have, it sounds like, is a knowledgeable advocate someone in advising or some other place who knew how the system worked, who could tell you, these are your options and here's what will happen if you choose this or that right, path. Right, exactly. It, not let that happen. Not let that happen and finish that damn degree. So, because right now, now it is. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm struggling to kind of figure out, and this has been, gosh, my last semester, it's 2016. I, this was you know, 2000, the beginning of 2014, I think. So you've been out of school for two years. Yeah, I've been out of school for two years now. And uh, and your loans are in deferment at this point because of financial need, or why would you not be? My lo loans are in deferment right now because I can't afford to pay them back. I'm yeah. on uh, Medicaid. I'm on food stamps right now. Um, You're part of that over $1 trillion national debt that students in this country have, have racked up in the last few decades, largely because of situations uh, like you've described, except what's really Really tragic is that you don't even have a degree to show for it you know like mm -hmm. you could have you could have spent that money in some other way and not I had a degree. spent that money on a you know something <laughs> that it's a food truck or something that I could have done right now that it would have taken me away from the the hardness of my actual job and could have been you know supplying me with money but you, you went know? to college because there was kind of this this social contract or this idea that you had that if you went to college and you did well you could get a degree and go on to be successful in some other way. I mean, I that's really, what we all grew up thinking. Right, right. And I really, you know, when I finally decided what I wanted to do, medicine, that was really important to me. I want to help people and I feel kind of robbed a little bit of that. And I could have gone on to do really good things and help people, um, which I can still do. You know, there's no end in that. But also at the same time, yeah, it's, I'm definitely disheartened and disappointed and, and in debt because of it. I'm sure you know better than I do that roofing is a a young person's profession, right? <laughs> oh, definitely. It's I'm, tough to be an older person doing roofing. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, I definitely, yeah, I want to do something that's easier on my body. My knees are already shot. I've got, you know, I've got issues physically from that work already. So I'm, I'm definitely wanting to find my niche in the world and make some money that doesn't involve me <laughs> hurting myself all the time. And, and, you know, provide for my son, period. That was my biggest thing, too, is just 
just doing something that I felt that would be noble in a sense where I was helping other people and that uh, made me money and took care of my son. How old is your son now? My son is seven. Yeah, he's on the autism spectrum and, and uh, it's just him and I and you know I've got my hands full let alone with my work but with just my personal life as well. If you were president of Adam State, what would you do differently? There's a lot of money going into that school that I feel is kind of used for silly things. Sitting um, on student government, were these some of the conclusions that you drew? Oh, or? yeah, definitely. Okay. There was, you know, like, there, you know, there's a lot of money that I think they spend on a lot of silly stuff that could be going towards more important ideas. You more know, advising I, and student assistance so that students like yourself exactly. wouldn't fall through oh, the cracks. Yeah. Maybe more sections of classes so they don't meet at the same time and then you're able to right. complete your exactly. degree. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, they only offer certain classes on certain semesters, and, and that makes it hard for you to graduate because you got to, you know, so I have to wait for fall semester to take that class, so I have, that puts me off a year, you know. I'm astonished by the number of programs they've rolled out in recent years, which is all fine, and there's a lot of fanfare behind it, and I think there's some fundraising motivations as well. But, you know, every time you do that, you you run the risk of spreading yourself out too thin. And I, I see many areas of the campus that are understaffed or under-resourced, and yet this, this interest in continuing to roll out, you know, master's programs and online programs, and it's like, you aren't doing well at the basics right, right. now. Why just would delivering you? a four-year degree in the areas that you currently offer. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, why, why, you know, you haven't even perfected that yet, so why would you stretch yourself out? How unique do you think your situation is? Not very unique, to be honest. I think, you know, my, my biggest life happens, you know, um, and yeah, there is no accommodation for that, really. There is no, we can help you with this. I don't think my situation is very unique at all. My brother, uh, Teo Chuito, is in kind of a certain situation with that as well, because of that whole attempted and, com and completed, that's his story to tell. But like I said, there's... So also an Adam State student... Also an Adam State student. Didn't complete a degree. Didn't complete a degree. <laughs> so multiple members of your family owe Adam State money for degrees that you didn't complete. Yes, three to be exact. Four, actually, all of us. <laughs> All of us kids, but my situation being uh, my situation my situation being completely unique to myself. I was the one who was helping mom during that time and those sorts of things. But yeah, all of us kids have attended. So you're a family of four <laughs> indebted Adam State students. Did any of you complete degrees? No. That says it right there. Wow. Yeah. And th this voice in the back of my head is saying. Maybe your family would be better off if it weren't for Adam State. <laughs> I mean, the amount of money that you've accrued in debt that's compounded with interest and the time that it's taken out of whatever else you could have been doing. I, I could certainly see you turning to one of your relatives or your son and saying, don't go to Adam State. It's like this family curse. <laughs> No lie, no lie. It's been it's been rough. Like I said before, just using that word over again, disheartening. It's you know I am extremely saddened by the fact that I did put so much effort towards this, and I'm not like I said again, fly by nighter. That is not my intentions, and nor was it ever to come to that school to get the financial aid and then just piss it away doing whatever. I was working my tail off in order to ensure that I finished my degree. And yeah, I had to take some courses over again. I had to take some of those math, math classes over but again. But you were able to clear those hurdles. Yeah, I was able to clear those hurdles. Exactly. It was this gauntlet and then eventually something tripped you up. Even if you were, it's kind of like the hunger games of higher education, you know. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'm going to put this out there on the internet. What would it take for Adam State to get you back? <laughs> you know, the thing for me right now is just how, how do I go to any school at this point? Because not only is that situation, I, I, I can't go to any school without now, a, you know, paying out of pocket. What can they do to get me back into a scholastic program? I'm pretty much screwed now. You know, I, I highly doubt that Adam State is going to be paying for three semesters for me to, you know, achieve my dream. They should want you back because their degree completion rate, their graduation rate is so low. They're hurting for enrollment, but they're by their practices and policies almost begging students like you to leave because they're not supporting you in the ways that would be necessary for you to stay and they're creating these arbitrary structures and policies and barriers that have sort of forced you off a track that you were intended to be on but they should want you back 
And I totally agree. You I were totally an investment agree. for them. Not only did you invest in Adam State, but whether they realize it or not, they invested a lot in you by virtue of their mission, by virtue of the taxpayers of Colorado and the United States mm -hmm. who helped to subsidize your education. And we as a nation are now getting less value out of Selena because not that I'm sure you don't do good roofing, but you wanted to be doing something else. We tried to help you collectively with, with some uh, state funding support, um, but the institution kind of failed to to help you to achieve that goal. Right, right. You know, here I go. I'll go back to work tomorrow on those damn roofs. <laughs> well, keep your chin up and hopefully you'll you'll find some measure of success, at least in another way. Maybe you'll write a great best-selling book called Zen and the Art of Roofing or something. <laughs> it's quite a possibility, Danny. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you. I appreciate it.